Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2008, it's a Suzuki SX4 and we're going to be replacing the front struts on this particular vehicle. We are not going to be changing the whole assembly because it's not available as a complete assembly. Uh, this got about 40,000 miles on it and the one strut on the right side is leaking a little bit so we're going to change both front struts at the same time. Um, this is the strut that we're going to we're replacing. This is the replacement. Um, Monroe does not make this strut, so we had to get it at a different supply house actually. Um, so we are going to be changing just the strut. We're not going to be changing the entire assembly. You know most of the time I do prefer to change the assemblies, but in this case we don't have much of a choice. We need to change them and they're not available, so that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take you up there. I'm going to show you what we're going to do, what kind of tools we're going to need, and then we're going to get this job done. So before I go any further, I am going to lift it up. I'm going to take the wheels off, and then once I have the wheels off, we'll come back and we'll get started. Okay, this is how we're going to proceed to get this, uh, this strut off of the vehicle. We're going to take out this nut here. I think that's like a 3 quarters or maybe a 19 millimeter. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to air gun off these two, yes, you did hear me say air gun off these two bolts right here. We're going to hold it back on this side. This side looks like it may be a 17 millimeter, but we're going to hold this one and air gun these two off right here. This, the uh, stabilizer link has got to be removed from the car itself, or I should say from the strut. As you can see, I did try to get in there ready with a socket, I'm sorry, with a Torx. It's actually a, or an Allen key, I should say. Uh, the, the, the Allen key is actually a 5 millimeter, so I did hammer it in there, and we're going we're gonna to be real careful with that because once that strips out in there, then we got to change the stabilizer link here, and uh, we don't want to have to change that unless we absolutely have to. So I am going to take an air gun in here, and I'm going to shoot this with an air gun first. This is probably going to be a 14 or a 15 millimeter nut. I'm going to try to break it loose first before I try to rotate it off and get it out. Uh, once I do break that loose, I'm going to hold it with a wrench, and I'm going to hold it with that 5 millimeter, and then I'm going to rotate just the nut. This stud, I'm not going to rotate, I'm just going to hold it stationary, but I will show you how to do that. We are going to remove that light here. We are going to remove, I love these, uh, these OTC lights, they're great. You know, you stick them any place and they point any direction you need to, uh, to point it, it actually it works out really well. Uh, we're going to take out that bolt right there that holds the brake line to the, uh, to the strut itself. That's probably about a 12 or a 13 millimeter, so we'll get in there and we'll take that out. We're going to pull this off of here. This is very easy. It's just mounted just like that. We'll pull that out. And then once we have that all set, we're going to leave these bolts in, and then we're going to go up top and we're going to disconnect the strut from the top and then we'll come back over here. So let me show you what tools you're going to need and uh, then we're going to get started. All right, this is an example of what you're going to need. Yes, I am going to be using an air gun. I'm not going to do it by hand today. Uh, the socket itself is either, like I said, a three-quarter or a 19 millimeter. Um, this one here is a uh, this smaller socket. This is a 14 millimeter. That's to break the, uh, the tie rod end loose. Of course, we're going to need a hammer or two. Uh, we're going to need a ratchet, a very long ratchet with a long extension, gives you a little more uh, leverage, a set of sockets that we're going to need, and of course we're going to need our, our 8 or 5 millimeter um, Allen key to get that, um, to hold that, that stabilizer link stationary. As you can see, I did spray it up with some penetrating oil already. Uh, of course our lights, our, our OTC lights, which come in very handy. Um, we're going to need a, a bungee cord or a piece of, piece of bonding wire just to hold the, uh, the uh, axle in so that the axle doesn't pull out and accidentally destroy the inner tripod. I'll show you what I mean. You see right inside here, this axle is connected to this uh, rotor and hub assembly. When you take out these bolts right here, this assembly is going to pull out. When that assembly pulls out, you want to minimize the, the pulling so you don't pull the inner tripod apart by accident. I've seen these happen many, many times where the tripods blow out and you wind up ripping off the boot. So uh, not that it's going to happen, but just be careful. What I do is I take the knuckle, I tie it back someplace to a stationary portion here just to keep it from falling out when I'm up top working. 
All right, if it does fall out, don't freak out. It's not a big deal. As long as you don't pull the boot off, you're okay. You just play with it back and forth and push it in until it actually pops back in place. All right, so now enough talking. Let's set the camera up. Let's, uh, let's get some tools and let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to shoot that off there so we can loosen it up. So that way we know whether we have to change the tie rod, in, uh, the uh, stabilizer link or not. All right, cover your ears. All right, that broke loose a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, we're going to get in here with a a wrench like that. Okay, now remember what I said about this here. We're not going to actually turn this. Let's get in here with the light so you can see, hopefully. I think you might be able to see fairly decent now. All right, we're not going to rotate this ratchet. We're going to hold it with this ratchet. We're going to just hold the centerpiece, and then we're going to rotate like this. The nut, just to get the nut off. Now, if you have a ratcheting wrench, you can use it. Let's see what we're doing. Now, it is getting fairly tight, so we're going to turn this back in. But one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to take a chance on stripping out that 5 millimeter. Let's get that out of the way there. See, okay, we don't want to take a chance on stripping out that five millimeter, um, that five millimeter right there. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to put a little bit of Nevisees on here. If you don't have Nevisees, you can use grease. I do have it sprayed up already with penetrating oil, but a little bit of Nevisees makes it go a little bit easier. Alright, so we're going to put this on here again. And that, you can see this is fairly loose. But when it gets to a certain point where it's tight, you see the whole thing starts to spin. Now we're going to come in here with this. But we're not going to do anything. We're just going to hold it and then rotate this out. tight again, so we're going to go back. And believe me, take your time with this. Unless you're going to be changing the, the stabilizer link, but you, you, as you can see, the stabilizer link is in a little bit of a tight spot down there also. So we're going to try to not replace it if we don't have to. Alright, a little bit more never sees or anti seize if you don't have that, even grease will be fine, whatever you have. I'm going to try it again. So now that you, you have that disconnected, we took our time and we saved having to change the stabilizer link. Okay? okay, now that we have that off, we're going to come over to this side here and we're going to remove that, that bolt on there. That should come out pretty easily. Like I said, it's going to be either a 12 or a 13 millimeter. 
is actually a 12 millimeter. Now, if you have an air gun, of course you can use it. Don't lose that bolt because we are going to need to reuse that. So we'll put that to the side for now. Take our brake line out. And now we're going to shoot off these two here. It is 17 millimeter on that side. Alright, cover your ears. that bolt because we're going to need it. Now these are actually pretty rusty in here but you're just working back and forth. Now I just want to point this out to you too. If, let me just put a nut back on here, if you have trouble getting out this stud right here, if you put a wrench on it and it doesn't turn at all like that one, what you can do is you come in here, you put your socket over the top of the nut like this, and bang on it, get a shorter socket, Take the nut back off. And now by hitting it with the socket on there, like this, you have the socket over the top like this. You're not damaging the threads on this end of it so you'll have no problem putting it back together. Just put a socket on it and just bang on the back of it. You're not going to hurt the socket. If that doesn't work, then you come around on the other side over here and you get on here with a breaker bar and uh, you try to break it loose that way. But as you can see, it worked okay. Same thing on the bottom here. You want to try to get it out a little bit. Now this one did turn, but... Okay. Now it comes right out. Uh, we'll save this nut because we are going to need to use it again. We'll put these to the side. Now what I normally do I'm going to take this stud out you see they get a little bit of rust on here so we will never seize this when we put it back in now sometimes the bolts are different top and bottom, so you want to make sure that they're both the same. So we're going to put that off to the side for now. Now this one, we're just going to tap it. Just like that. I am going to leave my scribe in just so you know. And you see, they're both the exact same, so it doesn't matter which one goes on top or which one goes on bottom. And as you can see, no damage to the threads when you bang on that nut with the socket. Sorry about that. Okay, now, I'm going to leave that in there temporarily. And the reason I say that is because you see how rusty that them bolts were coming out of there? This is going to be a little rusty here too. So we're not going to take a chance on this falling out prematurely. So we're just going to leave that right there. You see I just pried a little bit just to put a little bit of tension on this so it doesn't fall out by accident. And now at this point here, we're going to stop on the bottom, we're going to lower the car down, and we're going to continue up top. Okay, now we're underneath the hood, as you can see. 
and this is where the strut comes up right through here but as you can see you can't get in there to get to it because you have this plastic covering right here so what we need to do is we need to remove this weather stripping here it just pulls right off like that we'll pull it all the way across we're going to take these covers off right here and the way we're going to take these covers off is we're going to take these little clips out right here and here and then all the way up in here there's a couple of more clips up in there too we're going to need to take those off uh, we may have to take the windshield wiper arm off itself we're going to see if we can get this to lift up high enough that I can get in there without doing that but if you do have to take it off you just pop these off here like this and you take these out right here so uh, we'll see how it goes we may have to do that so we'll see how it goes so uh, all right and the way you do this let me get a screwdriver I'll show you you just get in here with a little tiny screwdriver let's get some light over here so you can see you just get in here with a little small screwdriver and you get in right there and you just rock it back and forth just like that see how it pulls it up now they do have a tool to get in here to do this but it's just the way it's located here it's not going to work properly so we just pull it up just like this and then take it right out just like that all right and we're going to do the same thing on all of these little clips all the way along here so let me uh, let me do this with two hands and we'll continue <laughs> thing we're going to do is we're going to spray this up with some penetrating oil. We're going to grab our air gun and we're going to break that loose but let me just change my gloves again. Okay, I'm back. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to air gun off. Let's bring you up here so you can see. Next thing we're going to do is going to air gun off this nut right here. Now, if you look at this here, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, if I, if I air gun that nut off, that spring is going to just blow apart. On this particular one, you'll see when I take it off, but this actually has a nut up on top and it also has a nut below, I think. So let's, uh, let's air gun it off and let's see what happens. Okay. Back 
come off a lot easier than I thought it was going to. This comes off here. This comes off here. I'll bring you in there. I'll show you. You know what? Let's take that strut out, and you'll see when I take it out. You know, come over on the side, and we're going to take that strut assembly out. But you'll see when I take that strut out of here. See here? You see down in there? It also has another nut up on the top right there too. So, all right, let's uh, let's lift this up, and uh, we're going to continue down on the uh, on the uh, on the bottom of the strut. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the top of the strut disconnected, we actually have this piece through here. We're going to just take this out, and now that strut assembly will just come right out. We're just going to rock it and pull it out like that. Then we're going to take it, put it down like this, and take it out. Now, before we go and let that go, Remember what I told you about this, this knuckle here? You see how it has a tendency to fall out? And you see the tripod pulling? I'm going to try to hold it back in there now with a bungee cord. And I should hold it. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. All right, so let's take this strut now and bring it over to the uh, strut machine, and we'll continue okay. that. All right, now we're going to take our strut and we'll put it into the machine. strut here, we're going to put these pieces in here. Slide them in just like that. And we're just going to put this snug for one minute here. We're going to turn this so that we remember where the strut is actually, um, the direction the strut is facing in. We take a pair of pliers Remember we always talk about this, we always clip the pliers onto it just to, uh, to make sure that it doesn't rotate while we shoot it with the air gun. So we're just going to snap these pliers on here like this. We're going to grab our air gun. Good. Okay, now, if you don't have this machine, don't play around trying to do anything in a makeshift um, press. Take it to a bar store. Pay them a few bucks and get them to do it for you. All right, so now that we have this set, we're going to push this down. We're going to release the pressure on this spring right here. Spray this with some penetrating oil because you can see it's a little rusty. Okay, here we go. We're going to hold the strut with one hand on the bottom and we'll shoot this nut over here on the top. Helps if you have the right size socket. And then we can take this nut off. Hold it off to the side for now. We are going to reuse that. We'll take our strut out. And now we're going to take this piece here off. This has to go back on. And this, uh, it's called a, a bumper. This comes off and we're going to reuse this also. I'm doing this in front. Normally I would do this down on the ground, but I'm just doing this in front of you so you can see it. And uh, you can't see it, but that's actually going down very slowly as we're standing here talking. 
So, all right, let me grab the new strut and we'll put it back together. Now, make sure you got the correct strut. As you can see, this one here is the exact same strut. And this one is the one for the right side. It's, as you can see, it's a mirror image, but it's not the right one. So now this is our new strut. We put our bounce bushing back on here. Put this over the top like this. Now we have to make sure that the spring goes right into that little groove right there. I'll put this back on the top like this. And we do not use the old nut that came off. We use a new nut because it's actually it's a self-locking nut. So I screwed that down as far as I can by hand. And now I'm going to shoot this in with an air gun. I'm going to make sure it lines up on the bottom where it's supposed to. tight. Now, if that was rotating and you couldn't really hold it, you can put that probably a five millimeter or a six millimeter in here, tighten it down until it's snug, and then you tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, but um, that's not the case. We are able to tighten it down. Now we're going to make sure we have the spring lined up with this groove on the other side, and then we'll just release the pressure on the machine. take this back to the car and we'll put it back in the car. Okay, so now after we have the strut, we're going to take this and put this back up through the top right up in here where it came out. Uh, we're not going to tighten it in yet. We need to put this part in over here first. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our bungee cords back off like this. slightly. And we're going to put the strut back in the way that it came out. But temporarily I'm just going to hold this real quick like that. And now I'm going to go up top and I'm going to catch that bolt loosely up top and I'm not going to tighten it up but uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. So I got the top bolt now. I got the top bolt caught loosely. It's not tight, but it's just to hold the top strut up while I work on the rest of this. All right, now remember we talked about never seizing everything before we put it back together. And the bolts make no difference. They're all the same. Well, I should say both are the same. So we're going to put some never seize 
on here. And we're just going to play with it back and forth. And if we got the bottom one in, then we can do the top. Again, we're going to never seize everything. Just like that. And then we'll take this out. And we'll slide the new bolt, the old bolt, back through. We may have to just tap it in a little. Right. We're going to catch both nuts back on here like this. And I will tighten up those uh, those bolts. Now you're probably asking why aren't these being torqued in. This car after we do this we are going to get the alignment set so we're just going to tighten these up right now and then we're going to retorque them after we do the alignment. <clears throat> Okay, so now our strut is tight. We're going to reattach this brake cable over here with that, uh, that bolt that we previously took out. We are going to screw it in by hand first. And then once we have it caught, then you can tighten it in with your ratchet. attach our ABS wire to its location here. And last, we're going to do is we're going to reattach that, uh, that um, stabilizer link. I'm going to use a lot of uh, Nevisees on here because it was very tight coming out. And I don't want to have to call a customer and tell them we have to change that too. Now, normally you would hold it with this and tighten it in. I'm going to attempt to shoot it all with the air gun. Which isn't going to happen. Okay. Now we're just going to remember, we're just going to hold the center portion right there and we're going to turn it with the wrench. Just going to tighten the wrench, and this we're not going to do anything with, right? Okay, all right. Let me just recap what we did in here, and then we'll go up top and we'll finish that off. Okay, we um, put our strut back in here, obviously. We put it through the top, we temporarily connected up the top piece right up there, just temporarily. We reattached our uh, cable for the anti-lock brakes. We installed our brake hose right back here with that bolt that was in there. We tightened up both of these uh, lower 
bolts on the strut, and of course we tightened up our stabilizer link. So, all right, let's lower it down. We'll tighten up the top, and then this side's done. Okay. Now, after we have the car back down, remember we caught that on there very loosely before. We didn't tighten it up all the way, but now we looked it up on the on the computer, and it calls for 101.5 foot-pounds. Needless to say, we're not going to do 101.5. We're going to just round it off to either 100, 102, whatever. I have it set for 102, so we're just going to tighten this down now. That's it. Um, all right. Okay, so components. now we got that one side back together over on the left side. We, we, we normally would put all of this cowling back on. We're not going to do that now because I have to do this side here yet. I have to do the, uh, the right side. We didn't do that yet, but we are going to do it. All right, so uh, normally you put it all back together, put your wipers back on where they were, and then snug them down. That's it. You're all set. All right, anybody has any questions or comments, want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.